Hello, this is Sister Charlie Winston coming to you today with Thursday's Daily Bible Study. I want to thank each of you for joining with me as we gather together to study the Word of the Lord, that we become more proficient doers of His Word and not hearers only. Amen. Our lesson for today is judgment followed by mercy. Judgment followed by mercy, coming from Psalm 78, verses 31 through 39. Amen. Before we get started, I want to ask if anything you see it touches your heart, soul, or spirit, if you have any questions, comments, please feel free to jot them at the bottom of the screen below that we may gather together to study, to, to, uh, to speak on the word of the Lord. Amen. And this will help embed the lesson in each of us. Amen. Also, if something is said, touches your heart, soul, or spirit, please, uh, uh, please subscribe to my channel and also hit the little bell in the corner there that you be, may be notified each time I put out a new lesson that we may study the word of the Lord together to grow stronger in his word. Amen. It seems things go better when you have a group together studied and going forward. Uh, in the Lord. It, it, it helps strengthen each other. Amen. So let us join together and, and continue in his word. Amen. Before we get started with our lesson, we're going to have prayer. Then we're going to move right into the lesson. Amen. Dear God in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us, those seen and unseen. We thank you for all that you have done is doing and shall do in each of our life. We thank you for guidance and leading us and protecting us in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that you are wonderful and that you are our counselor. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you're God Almighty and our everlasting Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are Prince of Peace, Lord. We thank you for peace in all situations and all circumstances in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for all the many blessings that you bestow upon us, those seen and unseen. Seen. Lord, we ask that you would open our eyes that we may see and our ears that we may hear. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from on high that we may go forth and be doers of your word. Give us the strength. You say we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Give us that mind to go forward in doing your will and your work in the name of Jesus. We ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. We're going to get ready and get started on our lesson, Judgment Followed by Mercy. Come from Psalm 78, verses 31 through 39. And the scripture lesson text reading, The wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. For all this they sinned still and believed not for his wondrous work. Amen. I'm going to stop right here and say this. You know, as we see here, they say the fast of them, those that are prospering and seem to be doing well, these are the ones that were smote down, and yet and still those that wasn't, they they, they said, okay, that's them. That, that's not me. It, it, it doesn't pertain to me because I'm not in that stead, but yet and still we have to be mindful and know that when others around us are being uh, smote down, then we need to make sure that we are in the right place because we can be in the wrong place. Amen. Uh, verse 33 it said, Therefore their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. When he slew them, then they sought him and they returned and inquired early after God. And they remembered the God that God was their rock and their high God their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongues. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were, were but flush, a wind that passes away and cometh not again. Let us remind ourselves who we are, and that we are made of God, and that we uh, have no commands at all of ourselves. We were put here for a reason. Let us go about that reason with with all vigor in our desire. Amen. Uh, commentary says, sin dispute, dispirits men and takes away the heart 
forgetfulness of God's work is the cause of disobedience to his laws. The na this narrative relates a struggle between God's goodness and man's badness. The Lord hears all our murmurs and distrust and is much displeased. Those that will not believe the power of God's mercy shall feel the fire of his indignation. Those cannot be said to trust in God's salvation as their happiness at last who cannot trust his providence in the way to it. To all that by faith and prayer ask, seek, and knock, these doors of heaven shall at any time be open, no matter what time of day or night, he, he will open if we knock. And our distrust of God is great aggravation of our sins. He expressed his resentment of, of their provocation, not in denying what they sinfully lusted after, but in granting it to them. Lust is contended with nothing. Those that indulge their lust will never be estranged from it. Those hearts are hard indeed that will either be melted by the mercies of the Lord nor broken by his judgment. Those that see and steal must expect to be in trouble still. And the reason why we live with so little comfort and to so little purpose is because we do not live by faith. Under these rebukes, they profess repentance, but they were not sincere, for they were not constant. In Israel's history, we have a picture of our own hearts and lives. God's patience and warnings and mercies emboldened them to harden their hearts against his word. And the history of kingdoms is much the same. Judgments and mercies, mercies have been little attended to until the measure of their sins has been full. And once it is full, then it's too late. And higher advantages have not kept churches from declining from the commandments of God. They studied changing the word, twisting it around, making trying to make it say what making it say what they wanted to say. As it reminds me of where it's where Jesus Christ said in his word when the uh a Pharisees was talking to him and he was saying that he told him that uh, why is it that uh, God said if, 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 if you uh, uh, do not obey father and mother that you would die to death but yet and still you change it and say it is Coban uh, that it is a gift then they didn't have to even take care or help their parents they they changed it around totally and with this it made it totally uh unacceptable and just because we change it don't mean God is going to accept it it said even true believers recollect that for a, for many a year they abuse the kindness of providence when they come to heaven how will they admire the Lord's patience and mercy and bringing them to his kingdom amen knowing that he can and will say uh uh uh, depart from me, I know you not. Let us not be in that state where we done twisted his word so that we believe it, knowing and 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 and, and it does not even uh, come close to what Christ is saying. Even if it's changed a little, we are not to change his word. We are to accept his word as it is because it said his word changed not. Amen. This is a wonderful and powerful lesson reminding us what to, to keep on our mind, to keep us in line. Amen. I pray you meditate on this wonderful lesson and have a wonderful and blessed day.